absolutely sky high. Kate State, a little bit blasé. It was an emotional football game, it seemed, from the start. You guys forced their hand and I think uh, uh, came out probably more prepared to play football. Well, we had decided that it was going to be an emotional football game for us. And, and we talked the night before and we talked during the week that we were going to play this football game as a team and we were going to stay as a team. And, and if we were beaten, then they were going to have to beat us. That we weren't going to lose the game. We weren't going to give it away. And no matter what happened to us, we were going to hang tough and we were going to try to play four quarters as a football team no matter what happened. And the kids came out screaming and you know something, uh, that everything didn't go good, especially at the beginning. And, and they hung and they hung and they hung and, and we just decided that if we didn't lose it, there'd be an opportunity there for us to win it. And the opportunities came and we grabbed them. People can talk about flukes in sports. This was no fluke. Wichita State came to play and quite frankly controlled the line of scrimmage from the opening series as the belief in themselves started to manifest itself and of course continue through on the ball game and carrying them to a shocking 16 to 10 upset. Let's take a look at the first half highlights because the Shocks came to play offensively. Right off the bat, the running game, trying to establish it early coach. Eric Denson sees the ball on a draw for eight yards here. You ran the draw frequently to establish that running game. Well, I think we had to and uh, we knew they had great pass rush and we didn't think that we were gonna be able to sit back there all day, but our defense uh, really comes after them, does a great job. and and we're putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback and that's tough for him. And I think our defensive kids, we put them in a heck of a hole. Here's a great hit by Donnie Weatherby. We put our defense in the hole about four or five times in the first quarter and they survived it. Shocks take over with 11.35 left in the quarter and quickly you go to the air. Near disaster right here in the fourth. Well, we misread the thing between zone and man. We had a mix up and uh, we almost gave away the farm on the very first shot out of the box, but we got out of it. Here's a lot of pressure being put on by the Blitz with uh, Bad Chung and Mark Duckins and Jimmy Mann, and it helps us. Shocks take over with 7.58 left in the quarter. McDonald's pass here is intercepted by a kid right out of Wichita, Castillo, and uh, Kansas State takes over. Again, the defense asks Shuffle after the pass. Court. Good play. Great execution by them, and uh, they do a good job. We finally get him knocked down by Derek Westfield, I believe, and they end up with a field goal. And this is their only score of the first quarter, and they had ample opportunities to score and our defense just wouldn't fold. They stayed on them and I think that that may have been the turning point in the ball game. Mark Porter connects from 47 yards at this point three to nothing and then McDonald uh, this is a little worrisome and obviously it had to be he took a lot of punishment oh. last year and early he was getting uh, he was he getting got sacked twice in a row and he had a little bit of time but it was taking time for the receivers to get open and he got knocked down twice in a row and our Offensive linemen, instead of folding, they hung and they hung in there. And by golly, if we don't come out with it, now we're starting to throw the ball better. Here's a completion on the uh, boundary to Brock Fewen. And now we're going to, I think, be a little bit better football team. This is the lead off the weak side, and Eric brings it back. And Eric was a fine running back on Saturday. I thought he did an excellent job for it. Wichita State trailing three to nothing at the end of the first period. They change ends, but you're on a roll, coach. First down from the 33. McDonald hits Eaton here for four yards. Then it's Velasco Smith. Yeah, Velasco on a little draw play and gets caught up behind him and then he decides he's going to outrun the pack and does a pretty good job with it. At this point, the Shocks offense comes to a stall and in comes Sergio Lopez Chavarro. Bad snap and Sergio still kicks it through. And uh, to bring us tie after the way we started, I think is a great, great measure of the of the way we played the football game we're now even up and we're in a chance to, to make this thing the kind of football game we want this return is scary they almost break it and uh, Sergio ends up stopping it Chris Badchung I think would have caught him but Sergio makes the hit and he got banged up on that one and he got banged up later on it was a tough day for him team swap possessions and with 759 left in the half uh, from their own 42 Kansas State with the football and the Wichita East product Kirk Allen comes up with great a great steal with a by turnover. Kirk Allen great steal and a lot of pressure by Mitchell Morris and I think that uh, defensively this was a turning point now here's uh, Velasco again winding this thing back off of the weak lead and we've got the ball moving we're in pretty good shape and they bring the blitz and Brian picks it up as does Jack Owens and it's a big completion down on about the six or seven yard line and Two plays later, we come back out. He gets caught on the way out on the boot, comes back and finds Velasco, and there's a collision on the goal line. But he's a tough little guy, so we get it in. Eight-yard touchdown pass. Velasco Smith in the seven plays, touched it six times. Shocks lead at this point, 10 to three. K-State gets it back with 4.19 remaining and look to move the football. Uh, they're coming along, coming well. Kirk Allen finally catches up with him, and uh, they uh, didn't fold their tent by any stretch of the imagination. This is a pretty good football team, and 
They're coming down the sideline, and we're hoping we can hang in there and get the ball back, and we're able to do it sooner or later. Amazing the amounts of turnovers that Wichita State's defense was able to garner here. A key one coming up right now is Williams is forced to uh, uh, bolt the pocket. Jimmy Mann and a host of others. Yeah, a big hit by Mark Duckins, and I think Randall Cooper picks the thing up. So it was a big turnover, and it was a big hit, and I think that's why the ball came out. In the National Football League, it would have been six. It's college football. You can't advance uh, any yeah. type of uh, a bobble on the play. Once it hits the ground, it's dead. On a second and seven, uh, Brian with the deep drop finds Kevin Pierce, who had a productive day. Sure did. He found him right in the hole, right where he belonged, and he had plenty of time to throw the football, and that's what it takes. That uh, sets up the uh, last play of the half, uh, basically an attempt by Sergio lopez Javaro, and this one falls short. He was obviously hurting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he was hurting a little bit, and he swiped at the ball and just wasn't a typical Sergio kick. I thought we played the thing just about right, and we didn't get it. So, But, Coach, the first half, you had to be heading into the locker room thinking, my, oh, my, our boys have done a tremendous job. You're exactly where you wanted to be, gaining confidence right. throughout the first half and a chance to win the football game. That's all we asked for was a chance for us to win. The opportunity to win the football game is all we really wanted. And at, time, at that time, I felt we were in pretty good shape. Indeed they were, as we will find out in the second half of action. Wichita State continues to gain the momentum that they garnered in the first half. We'll be back to take a look at that right after this time. Huh? That going in, everyone might have thought was superior. At the intermission, what type of conversation was there in the locker room? What type of uh, attitudes were, were being crossed? Well, you might find it a little bit strange. The biggest thing going on in the locker room was how to get dry clothes on and get enough water in you because the emotion that's involved is also going to suck a little bit out of you. And so we spent a lot of time changing T-shirts, trying to get people cooled down, dried off, and getting as much fluid in as we could. And then right before we came out, we had a little talk about not only do we have an opportunity to win this thing, we're going to win this thing, and we are going to go out and take the football and control it in this second half, and that's what we tried to do. Now, Coach, what were your concerns in the second half of action? Obviously, you had to have some. Well, I think a major concern was how long could some of our, ki our kids hold up. You know, could we, could we go the distance with the number of kids we thought had to go the distance? And we got down to about the last three minutes or so, and we started to lose some kids with cramps, and that was just you know, a natural thing on that kind of a day. But uh, I think, by and large, our emotion carried us through it. So we did, we did pretty well with it. Into the second half, Wichita State, as we said, leading by a touchdown at the intermission, looking to pad their lead and control the football as the emotion continues to build at Kansas State Wildcat Stadium. And Wichita State coming out of the locker room again in the second half, a sky-high unit, but a team within themselves and aware of the fact that they had an opportunity to win a football game against a sister school and a Big 8 conference call. And off the bat, looking for the ball control with Dwight Eaton. Right, Dwight Eaton gets nine on the weak side off our split back series, and we think that we're coming out of there. We want to hold on the football. We'd like to run the ball some and be able to eat up some clock. And with a little bootleg, Brian gets picked. And he doesn't have a chance, so he runs it, steps out of bounds, and we get lucky because they have a late, late hit that gets us an extra 15. Coach takes a dump right there. I saw it too. Huh? Well, I was trying to catch Brian, and he ended up rolling me out of there. You stay on a roll, though, as uh, you look for Owens across the middle on the quick, uh, the quick release there. They were blitzing. Once and again, picked he picked up. up the blitz. It was a good job our kids seeing things and reading them. They picked it up, and it really helped us. The drive stalls, and Lopez Chavarro filling the ill effects, and here he takes a good bump and, and hits the turf hard, misses from 52 yards. Yeah, I think this is where he lost a knee, and to me, this is a real sad state of affairs, but there's not much you can do about it, and I don't know how long he'll be, he'll be lost. But now here's a big play by uh, our defensive football team, and then we get called for roughing because we piled on him after. There's another big hit, and this one is by Donnie Weather being a quarterback, fumbles, can't get it, and there's a big mild wild scramble and we do come up with a football so we're making things happen on defense and the emotion is really sky high for us and that's what it's really all about try to take it in the end zone here with good field position looking yeah, for all we try to go deep and get a touchdown I think we might have we had a little mix up on the pattern and in comes the young freshman kid and Brad Fleeman kicks it home for us and uh, very very pleased for him because he struggled a little bit in the preseason but he sure did kick it there on Saturday and I know he's excited. Good for 40 yards 13 to 3 the shocks lead and now it's back to the defensive situation but K-State looking for the short passing games moves the football a little bit. Good play good play big hit and there goes the football and I think Randall Cooper comes out of the pile with it and there's the emotion. Indeed he does and the defense continues to play wired football 937 left in the third you take over on the K-State 47 and here's the big pop from Velasco. A little counter play by Velasco. We've been running weak a lot and this time we counter back off the weak side and 
and he takes that thing through there with a big play for us. And I think this about got us down where we needed to be. I guess like, this is a slow motion rerun of it. And he does have a little bit of ability here. He's not very uh, high off the ground, so his, his ability, center of gravity is yeah, not very high. His ability to change laterally is, is very impressive. He reads with his peripheral vision uh, impressively indeed. Uh, then it's Denson who ran very well yesterday Extremely indeed. Extremely well. He ran with great authority and put the ball up in there just like you'd want to have a halfback do. And this is fourth and real short and we don't want to take a chance. We need the three points so we go in and we take it and Brad click, uh, kicks it through again for us. So it gives us a little bit of a pad for our lead and I think that's what we needed. 16 to three at this point, Wichita State, K-State. Not in the coffin yet. They come back impressively, moving the football yeah, on the ground. Big backs of theirs run hard, and they got us on the weak side in there and did a pretty good job with it. And we get some pressure on him. He comes out of there and still makes the play and makes the catch, and they're moving the football. So our defense has still got a lot of work cut out for them, but you know something? They hung tough. And here's the big call right here, the no big. call for Kansas State fans, but it looked like on the replay that Weatherby made the defensive play. And Weatherby it made a, a big defensive play. The only question is, had his arm started to move forward, and that's an official's decision. And if I'm wearing purple, I don't like it. And, but I wasn't wearing purple yesterday, so I thought it was a pretty good call. Here's Kevin Pierce again, and it's good to see him uh, opening up the middle a little bit with a deeper play. Yep, this is a great job of Brian. This is actually his third receiver. He went down there and went through two of them, got up on top of the third one. Picked him up, did a good job with it. Little check by Brian McDonald to Brock Few and good job with the football. And we're down there in pretty good shape once again. Brock Few is a good athlete. He makes a lot of things happen, run, runs crisp patterns and precise patterns. He does things well, and I think that's really what it's all about. Our receivers caught the ball extremely well yesterday, and, and that's what it's going to take to win football games. And here we have another chance for another field goal. It's kicked plenty well. and. Doggone things just a little bit wide to the right. We thought maybe that might just be the icing on the cake, but we couldn't quite get it done. Into the fourth quarter now. It opens with a nice run from Eric Denson, but unfortunately bad news for the team in white at the end of this. Good counter play. Ran hard, and they just flat stripped it away from him. It was a good job of defense. They ripped it out of his hands, and those things can happen to you. Now they come back, and they're going to try and go down and score, and they do a pretty good job moving the football here. Williams hits Elder for nine and a first down. Then it's Greg Stram, who really saw a lot of action late in the ball game, toting the load for K-State. Well, he's running hard, and look at the, the effort that he has and the time. Showers, a couple of thunder showers probably in there from just uh, around the Manhattan area, some light activity southeast of Salina, and then from about McPherson, back through Hutchinson, Kingman, back on right along the uh, Pratt Harper uh, or Pratt Barber County line, some thunderstorm activity around the Sun City area. This all moving to the northeast at about 20 to 25 miles per hour. The heavy thunderstorms are down in Oklahoma over much of the north central section of that state, and much of this activity has been showing very little movement in the last couple of hours, so they're probably going to get some very heavy rains down there. Let's take a look at the uh, satellite picture this afternoon, and you can see the activity, scattered clouds around Kansas, but to the west and to the east, mostly sunny skies, a nice day across our area. Kind of cool, though. This is a very strong, for this time of the year, high-pressure area, centered up in Canada still, that will be sliding southeastward in the next 24 hours. To the northeast of the front, still some very cool temperatures, but to the south of it, things stay warm, and that warmer air, as I said, should be starting to move back into Kansas especially by tomorrow afternoon and into Wednesday. Let's take a look at your hometown forecast now and the current conditions. In Wichita and Hutchinson, we are looking at mostly cloudy skies in Wichita. It is raining, though, in Hutchinson, and you can see the difference with 79 degrees in Hutch, 86 in Wichita, 45% humidity, north winds at 13, and a steady barometer. Our statistics in Wichita today show a high of 89 degrees after a morning low of 64, a little bit cooler than I had expected. I didn't think the front would come quite so far south with as much punch, but no rainfall so far today in Wichita for tonight. Mostly cloudy skies, I think, around the region with still that chance of some showers and thunder showers you saw on radar though the best chances will continue right where it is now from medicine lodge hutchinson up toward the salina area overnight lows should be about 62 for wichita 59 for salina with that chance of some showers around through the nighttime hours then for tomorrow partly cloudy skies by noon still very very comfortable 78 and 75 south to north and then our highs tomorrow afternoon around 89 degrees once again for wichita about 84 for salina with partly cloudy skies so another nice day to come tomorrow, but then on Wednesday, things start warming back up again around 90 degrees, and it looks like partly cloudy skies throughout the week, and our temperatures making it back to the mid-90s by Friday. We get a couple days break, though, and yes. we'll take 
any amount of days we can you get. You got it. Okay, thanks, Merrill Raj. Pete Rose never does things the conventional way. He could break the big record tonight, but he may not play, right? No, he may not. Uh, they've got a left-hander. The uh -huh. Padres do go in tonight. Pete normally doesn't uh, play against left-handers, but if uh, Dravecki goes out and they bring in another guy, maybe Rose will uh, come in and maybe go for the record. We're going to talk to Pete coming up in the sports. Try your skill on Wheel Deal and Wheel of Fortune after the news. Then at 7, enjoy Scarecrow and Mrs. King. At 8, Kate and Allie. And at 8.30, the comedy of Newhart. Cagney and Lacey return at 9, and Eyewitness News Nightcast at 10. No matter how things change, or how we live today, the best things in life are done in the original way. Enjoy something original. Secret or Kentucky Fried Chicken Original Recipe. We've been doing chicken right for 40 years. We're not going to change it now. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Enjoy something original now. Here comes Sportman, leading a convoy of El Dorado mobile homes built right here in Kansas for the last 29 years to be on display at the Kansas State Fair in Hutch. Sportman brings you RV values the same way he has in automobiles for 33 years. Plus, Sportman stands behind every quality El Dorado mobile home with dynamic service. Rusty Eck, famous for selection, brings you the biggest array of El Dorado mobile homes in Kansas. So don't miss the big display of El Dorado mobile homes at the Kansas State Fair from Rusty Eck RVs, the home of Sportman. Heath introduces a new soft and crunchy candy bar. It's soft. It's crunchy. Toffee Tidbits covered with real milk chocolate. It's Heath's new soft and crunchy. For midday snack, you can't beat a Heath. Heath's new soft and crunchy. You can't beat a Heath. Heath. I love the great taste of Heath, America's original toffee bar. Rich English toffee covered with real milk chocolate. For a quick pick-me-up, you can't beat a Heath. America's original toffee bar. You can't beat a Heath. Do the kids need some new wheels to get to school? If you're a winner on Wheel Deal this week, you've got the problem solved. You'll win this BMX bicycle from Coca-Cola Bottling Company. We play Wheel Deal every night at 6.30 during Wheel of Fortune right here on KBS and Channel 12. When you see Wheel Deal on your screen, you solve the puzzle along with the contestant on TV. If you're the first to call 436-1212 with the correct answer, you're our winner. Play along weeknights at 6.30 and win this bike. Well, even though yesterday's game between the Reds and the Cubs was called due to rain and darkness with the score tied at five in the ninth, the National League announced today that the game will stand as legally tied and both of Pete Rowe's hits will count. The ivy-covered walls of Wrigley Field were the setting for Rowe's singles in the first and fifth innings, tying Cobb's all-time record for career base hits at 4,191. The Reds are home tonight against the Padres, who will send left-hander Dave Dravecki to the mound. As we mentioned earlier, Rose usually doesn't play against lefties, but he may pinch hit if there is a pitching change. In the meantime, Rose is proud of his accomplishments, but he's even more happy about bringing winning baseball back to the city of Cincinnati. Well, I think, I think we're all proud of that, all the guys on my ball club, because uh, when I went back there last year, uh, I had found that the attitude was slipped away from not only the people uh, that run the ball club, uh, the front office, the players, and the fans. And uh, now we're just now getting the, the people back to, uh, to come to Riverfront to see us win, not to see us play. And that's a big difference because in the 70s, uh, the people come to Riverfront and they expected us to win. Yeah. And we did, and we sort of spoiled them. And it's going to take some doing to get them back because, uh, you know, how many teams are you ever going to have as good as the ones we had in 75 and 76? And not many. This Saturday night, we'll be in the Metrodome in Minneapolis to bring you all the action live as Wichita State takes on Minnesota. Bruce Hurdle and I will be there to call the game. Kickoff will be at 7 o'clock. And that game now takes on some added significance after last Saturday's 16-10 win over Kansas State. The Shockers came into this one fired up. They won the intensity battle up front early in the game, out hitting the Cats and forcing six turnovers, three leading to scores. Getting the season off to this kind of start was really more than anyone could ask for. It gives us a great lift. We came off last year feeling a little down. We made promises to ourselves we are going to work hard, and we are going to come into this season and really work our butts off. And with the win today, after all the hard work we went through in spring two-a-days, this really helps and pays off and makes it all worthwhile. After the game, the Cats admitted to being a little overconfident coming into the matchup. 
You really can't blame them. After all, this was only the fourth Shocker win in a series that began back in 1900. It was a tough loss to take for the K-State players, especially for a Wichita native. I, I consider it really myself a personal embarrassment because, you know, I came here because I, I thought I was going to a better football program and a better, you know, school. And uh, it's, it's a tough loss. It really is. But, you know, I really thought we were going to be ready to play today. I really did. And, we just came out flat, and it seemed like every break went to them. I mean, they, they played a perfect game, and we could just get nothing right. But I, I guarantee one thing, this Kansas State team will not quit.